Fresh means literally fat. Now, what that means is overflowing with healthy fats, olive oil. You'll be oil producing. You'll still be anointed when you're old. You'll still have the presence of the Lord in your life when you're old. And you'll still be flourishing. And that literally means green. You'll still be leafing every spring. You will be alive in your old age. I tell you, I like that. I like the thought of being anointed with the Holy Spirit and bearing fruit, more fruit the older I get and still alive and still excited and still happy and still working for the Lord. That excites me. You can go to a church and say, well, that's an older church. That doesn't tell you a thing. They can be old and dead or old and alive. If they're a Psalm 92 church, That church is going to bear fruit and grow no matter what the collective age of that church is. That church can be an average age of 60 and still be fresh and flourishing and working for the Lord. That church can be a collective age of 45 and be in decline already. For the first time in my ministry in this church, I've started doing... Uh, sequential weddings without funerals interrupting. I believe we've turned a corner. I've done as many as six funerals in a row without a wedding or a baby dedication to alleviate uh, the, the loss that I feel. I have, since my last funeral, preached two wonderful weddings and I have two more scheduled in the next five to six weeks and if nobody dies, I'll have four Weddings without a funeral. I believe we have turned a corner. So it's natural of me, I think, lately, to think about our relationship with the local church in terms of a marriage. Being part of a good local church family, like being a partner in a good marriage, is a wonderful thing. Now notice I said a good marriage is a wonderful thing. Notice I said, in a good church, is a wonderful thing. It is a covenant relationship that, if faithfully honored, will bear increasing fruit as we age. I want to share with you my testimony a little bit. I grew up in a good local church, had the benefit of a good marriage as an example of my parents, I uh, never heard them argue. And we lived in a four-room meal house, uh, so I would have heard them. <laughs> um, and I was in a good church. And when I was uh, eight years old, I got saved, and the first thing they told me to do was join the church, and I couldn't wait. And I joined the church uh, in uh, June 13th, 1962. In fact, I wasn't quite eight years old yet. And the Lord in that church taught me so many things that I look back on. I've talked to you about how I learned Pilgrim's Progress in children's church. My great Sunday school teachers, youth leaders, about how at least nine of our youth group are now engaged in full-time Christian ministry. But I'm going to tell you about what I saw in the church by the fact that we went on Sunday night and Wednesday night. That's usually when the power fell, right? And I remember old brother Ed Hilton, spelled with two D's, and he sat right where Mary's sitting, except that's where his wife sat, and he sat on the end, okay? She didn't box him in like you got Glenn tied in there. And he was right on the end, and she was dignified, right? And uh, there's nothing more miserable than a dignified holiness woman, but anyway... He would get ready to shout, the power got, and he'd start to get up to testify. He wanted to get, and he'd get up, and she'd yank his coat down, and then he'd start up a few minutes later, and she'd run, and you see, and I'd sit over there and watch, get where I could watch this, All right? And then finally, he'd just kind of gently push her, and she couldn't. <laughs> 
I promised myself I wouldn't shout this morning. I got on new shoes. <laughs> and I don't know how they're going to wear. But I'm going to tell you, he'd jump up. About that time, he'd say something. He'd say, I remember when I got sanctified. Bless God, when I got sanctified, even the old mule knew it. That meant he didn't cuss him and whop him on the head. All right? I remember another time when he, the Spirit of God was moving and he'd jump up and he'd say, this is that. All right? And some of you know what verse that is. Peter quoted that from Joel. And then he'd say, and if this ain't that, somebody show me where that is and I'll be going. I remember these things from my childhood. I remember his sister, Laura Hilton, who was a missionary in China before the Japanese ran them out. And she used to sit with me and tell me, about the children in China and those who gave their hearts to the Lord and the thousands and tens of thousands who are now under communism and that she was praying for them, that the seed she planted in those children is part of an underground church. I remember that. I remember how to be, uh, she taught me a lesson right before I moved away. She was sick and couldn't come. I knew she was discouraged. She'd had to move into a kind of a nursing home or retirement, give up her home. She wasn't feeling well. And for the first time in my life, I went by to encourage somebody. And I was getting ready to leave town and go away to, to college. And I bought a card at the drugstore. I don't like to shop on Sunday, but I, I said, I'm going to run in people's drugstore and get a card. And I got a pretty card with a flower on it, and I took it by her house. And she read it. And, and she busted out laughing. And she said, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> I bought her a sympathy card. <laughs> and, and then finally she said, that, she said, the Lord led you, son. She said, that did me more good. I just needed to laugh. <laughs> so these are the kind of things. I'm not sure what's going on. All right, I'll stay right here. But there are many people, many children, many adults now, who don't know what it means to be raised in a good church family. Even if they've been in church, they may have bounced from place to place to place. Now, part of it is that we live in a highly transient, unstable, very mobile society. The average American today has changed careers, not jobs, careers, seven times. Now, I've been thankful that hasn't been the case with me, and my only adult job in education has been at Ferrum College, where I'll be the, uh, I've been there for almost 30 years. But the average American today moves relocates 13 times, 13 times. 15 million people leave their community each year and move to another community. This is even more so in Martinsville and Henry County because of a decreasing economic opportunity and many who want to better themselves or many who go away and get college degrees unless they're in education or in health-related fields find difficulty working here. Some drive to Roanoke or Greensboro or Winston or Raleigh, but others have to go to Charlotte or somewhere like that to earn a living. And you know that because many of your children and grandchildren have gone. Along with this transient mobile society has been the rise of a, an increasingly me-oriented, self-centered culture. And when you put the fact that people are moving and bouncing from place to place and the society is saying it's all about you, get what you want, what we're seeing in the church, what we're seeing in marriages, what we're seeing in many aspects of society is a decline in commitment, an unwillingness to make commitments, a difficulty in keeping them. 